It's Cammy Dam, Brother John here from Revival Hour. Welcome once again, and I thank God for all those that are following us to uh, hear the truth of the Word of God. And I want to open up this with a statement again. It's not what Brother John is against, but it's what Brother John is for. And I'm for the Word of God. And I'm sure that you are for the Word of God today. And I encourage you to keep digging in to the word of the Lord. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And his name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Aren't you, aren't you glad that, that he rose from the dead? You know, the Bible says that if the devil knew... What he was doing, you know, he was encouraging everybody to uh, crucify him. That if he would have known the future, he doesn't know the future, he would have never gone ahead with that. But he was doing God a favor because Jesus had to go to the cross and die for the sins of the world. So the partition of sin between us and God can be broken and we can come back to God, a relationship with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there is no other name, uh, under heaven, over heaven, anywhere, but the name of Jesus Christ. No other name but Jesus that can we can be saved. Correct. Anyway, I, I want I have um, a topic here today, and uh, we're not going to be talking about deception. We did three programs for deception, and this is why we're not winning our cities for God, part six. So, uh, and I mentioned last week that I will touch about evangelism. And uh, I tell you, what I'm going to talk about, I, you know, I, people talk about in their homes, and uh, but we're afraid to talk about it in the open. Um, so let me start with this. You know, I grew up in a church in Toronto that, you know, it was a great church. And, you know, we were... We were militant in a sense that, you know, we had prayer meetings all the time. We had, um, we were reaching out the, the lost, the needy. Uh, the church had at that time probably about 3,000 people and it went to over 5,000. And uh, I tell you, we had a lot of pastors. We had a lot of uh, youth. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a lively church, you know. There was, uh, you couldn't wait to go to church. Um, every Sunday and every Sunday morning, every Sunday night and uh, Friday night praying meetings and uh, Monday night college and career and youth services. Uh, so there was always something happening every day of the week, you know, and, um, and, and, and you know, it, it, it was fun because uh, we, we saw new Christians every week. We saw people heal. We saw people saved. We saw people, uh, marriages restore. We, we saw a lot of great things. So every week, every, every time we went to church, it was something happening differently. And, you know, and, and we dress properly. You know, every, every time that you go to a function, you know, you, you, you dress properly to go to the church. And you say, oh, oh where are you going, Brother John? Are you going to talk? Are you going to be talking about, you know, how we dress and uh, how uh, I'm going to touch a little bit. And it's not legalistic. It's not legalism. It's just an observation from Brother John. You know, I don't have a church. You know, I I don't have uh, uh, people that I preach every week or anything like that. So I can talk about this because and I'm, out, I'm an outsider. But, uh, you know, I know what's going on in Canada in different parts of Canada and and. And I, and I tell you, if I took a picture of what we're doing today and show it to the people 20 years ago, it will be a shock, you know. And uh, I do want to talk about 
the ways of evangelism that we're using and why we're using those tactics, why we're using these strategies. And I say, what are you talking about, Pastor John? What are you talking about, Brother John? I'm talking about that, you know, uh, we see now in, in, um, in uh, YouTube and uh, on, uh, on the Internet, we see live streams of different congregations across North America. And I tell you, it's a different picture of what it used to be back where I grew up. You know, now we, uh, and listen to this, now we're dressing like the world or we have different strategies in our congregations to reach the world. So we're dressing like the world to reach the world. You know, now we, we even have drinks in the congregations. You know, now it's very casual. It's very nonchalant. And, you know, I, I remember I visited a church once, and I and I don't think I'll ever go back. But when I got in, I tell you, it, it was like walking into a rock concert. Uh, the music was Christian. The, um, the, uh, the songs were Christians. Uh, everything was Christian. But, you know, the, the, the people on the stage, they were just dressing like the world. So anybody... You know, and, and yes, there were people raising their hands, not too many people entering to worship. And, 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 you know, that's only one church, but I see that it's happening now in North America and nobody's talking about it. And I tell you, it's really hard for me to talk about it in this program, but I believe that this is the most important program that you're going to hear because Brother John has to say something about it. Why? Because I believe that God wants me to say something about it. And um, what, what I want to do, I want to read a couple of scriptures and, um, and then we'll take it from there. He says, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? So the arm of the Lord. And, and I want you to really um, study about the arm of the Lord, which, you know, the scriptures shows us that it's Jesus Christ. Is the power of God. It has many, uh, many functions. The hand of God, the arm of the Lord. And uh, Isaiah 51, uh, that was in uh, Isaiah 53, 1. In Isaiah 51, 9 and 10, he says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generation of old. Then Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm. Listen to that. An outstretched arm and with great judgment. I'm going to keep reading a couple more scriptures, but I want to go back to the topic over here. Uh, and listen to this comment. I made this comment a few months back. And, uh, and, 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 and some of us, some churches don't see it. You know, isn't the saying that sometimes an outsider can see things <laughs> better than an insider? And, uh, or uh, what is a blind spot? A blind spot is something that you cannot see, but somebody on the outside can see. So I want you to take this message as an outsider looking in and then you know you take it you know whatever I say you take it to yourself and say you know are we you know is brother John heading something that he's right about okay listen to the statement that I made a few months ago we have learned to live without the Holy Spirit oh my god we have learned to live without the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit in a church, what, what, what happens? If the Holy Spirit is really moving in a church, what happens? That church becomes what? A praying church. Automatically. Because the Holy Spirit cannot be present and have prayerlessness. Correct? Number two, if the Holy Spirit is present in a church then it has to be soul winning, meaning we're reaching people to Christ. We add into the church daily. 
So if the Holy Spirit is in a body of Christ, is in a church, that means that there is power, correct? And, and the power of the gospel, the power of God, the arm of the Lord, the arm of the Lord is the power of God, uh, all of that. So that means that a, a, a true church of God, that the Holy Spirit is present, there are, there are signs to, to, to say, okay, the Holy Spirit is there. And, be, and, and how do we know that the Holy Spirit is there? Because it's a praying church, it's an evangelism church, there is holiness. Hello, oh, 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 my God. There is holiness. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So there is holiness. That means there is repentance. Oh, 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 my God. We're getting too deep. Well, a holy God is a holy God. So we're getting deep over here. So there is holiness. There is repentance. And, and there is truth. And there is no fear of men. But there is fear of God. Because we respect the presence of of God in our churches. And if we allow the Holy Spirit of the living God to flow correctly in our churches, then that means that there will be all these signs. Amen. There will be all these signs. So the signs of a Holy Spirit in a church, that means that it's a praying church, it's an evangelistic church, it's a discipleship church, it's a holy church, it's a church that preaches repentance, it's a church that has no fear of men, but has fear of God, it's a church that we preach without fearing men, without fearing to rock the boat. Correct? Correct. So listen, I go back to my statement. We have learned to live without the Holy Spirit. And I believe that a lot of churches today They have learned to live with the Holy, with, without the Holy Ghost. Because there is no repentance. There is not real preaching of heaven and hell and all of these things. There is no righteousness. There is no... Uh, so a lot of that stuff. So if, if, if none of that is present, so hello, then he might not be there. We might sense some presence, some anointing, because we have... God in us. So are we going to feel God? Of course we are. But I'm talking about more than just feeling God in our lives. We have to feel God in our churches. Because you see, we have a duty before the Lord to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Correct? Okay. So we have learned, and that's a big statement, but I'm, I'm 100% sure I believe that. Because I see what's happening in the body of Christ. So what happened when there is no... And help me out here, Steve. Let's have a little chat over here. So, when there is no soul winning, there is no prayer, there is no fasting, there is no holiness, there is no preaching. So, don't tell me the Holy Spirit is, is there, right? So, the Holy Spirit is not there. We're quenching the Holy Spirit. We're hindering the Holy Spirit. So, what happens when quenching the Holy Spirit? So, what happens when there is no move of the Holy Spirit, then we come up with programs. We come up with programs. So we're trying to do his job. So we think that he's there. But because he's not there, he's not reaching anything. Because we're not praying. We're not holy. We're not repenting. We're not all of these things. So what happens? We come up with programs to reach people. And, and I don't know about you. But I don't know why we are depending on dressing down to reach the lost. And where is the Holy Spirit's reliance? We shouldn't be relying upon, okay, you know what? We need to reach the lost, so we got to dress like them. That's right. So what happens is... We're dressing down to attract the world. But where do you find that in the Bible? We don't find that in the Bible. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. So what happens is this. And I, I'm sorry. I'm going to rock your boat. Because we have to get away from that mentality. You know, I went to a church. And I tell you, they had ripped jeans. They had... Their hair was a mess. They were singing beautiful songs. Beautiful. And I'm not judging. 
this, this, this is an observation from outside in to help us out. Because, you see, when I came out of these churches, I came out saying, what about the people that dress well every day? What about the business people? What about the president of the company? What, what, you know, are we making it comfortable for them? So what's happening, we are dressing down to reach people and to say, okay, this come nonchalant. You want to come with shorts? Come with shorts. You want to come with a bathing suit? Come with a bathing suit. You want to have a coffee? Come into the sanctuary and have a coffee. Uh, you know, all of these things. So we have forgotten that it is not by might, it is not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. So you see, where I grew up, the church that we had, we did not rely upon the way we dress. It was not how we dress that we reach people. It's by allowing the Holy Spirit. And I'm rocking the boat. And I thank God I'm rocking the boat. Because we allow the Holy Spirit to come into the presence. And with the need to dress like the world. We needed to dress properly to go to church. Some people wore ties. Some people didn't. Some people wore jeans. But we dressed properly. But now we're dressing like the world to attract the world. What about the businessmen? What about those that they wear suits everywhere they go? What are we doing with them? We're eliminating them. Why? Because we are blind of the true word of the Lord. Of the true leading of the Lord. Because we have learned to live without the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to read some nice scriptures to you. Now we're going to go to Psalm 44.3. It says, For by their own sword, listen to this, they did not possess the land. Why did not possess the land? Why we're not possessing the land? Because we have our own sword. We're trying our own programs. Come on. Come on. Get back to prayer. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your church. Let holiness return. Let repentance return. Let prayer return. And then evangelism will come. You don't need to dress like the world to reach the world. You need to seek God and allow the Holy Spirit. Because no man cometh unto the Father unless the Father draws them unto him. How does the Father draw them unto him? By the Holy Spirit. The arm of the Lord is Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. God is the one. Some plant the seed, some water. But who gives increase? Come on. Who gives increase? Ripped jeans and the way we dress. God gives increase. So he says in Psalm 44, 3. For by their own sword they did not possess the land. And their own, listen to this. And their own arm did not save them. But Who? But your right hand, Lord, and your arm, and the light of your presence, for you favor them. So it's not our sore. It's not our arm. Because if we do that, we are operating, I'm sorry to tell you that, in pure F-L-E-S-H. Pure flesh. We cannot reach the world by flesh. Now we're going to go to a stronger one. Are you ready? I told you it's not what I'm against. I'm not against all of these things. I'm just preaching the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse 5. You want to hear from a word from the Lord? You want some prophecy for those that seek prophecy? You want a prophetic word for those that look at prophets? Here's a prophet. The word of God. This is what the Lord says. Curse is the one who trusts in men. Curse is the one who draws his strength from where? For mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. I tell you, this is the most important program because this has been downloaded from the heart of God And God wants me to speak about this so that churches will open up their eyes, cancel the stupid strategies of the flesh that we're trying to reach our cities. And, and instead, we are cursed. 
Why is Canada in the place that it is? Why we're not winning people to, to God? Why we're not winning our cities? We're trying. We have efforts. We have all of these things. But the Bible here, says here, cares, curse is the one who trusts in men and who draws strength from their flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Then another one. It says, with him is only, listen to this, with him is only the arm of flesh. You see, that's all we have. It's the arm of flesh, not the arm of the Lord. But with us is the Lord God. Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles and that people gain confidence from what Hezekiah, the king of Judah said. Oh my God. You see, we either have trust in the Lord or we can put confidence in the flesh. And I'm sorry, pastors. I'm sorry, leaders. I'm sorry, Christians. I'm sorry, but you know, the, the topics that you speak at your after you leave church and you gossip and you blah, 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 blah. Well, Brother John is telling you what you talk in your households. God is showing me that. We go home and we complain that there is no prayer. But we're afraid to tell our leaders that there is no holiness, that there is no repentance, that there is no Holy Spirit. We go and talk and complain, but we're so loyal to our churches. Oh, my God. We're more loyal to our churches than we are to the Word of God. We are more loyal to the churches than we are to, to, to God. We are more loyal to our leaders than we are to God. But we gossip about our leaders. We gossip about our pastors when we go home. And he says, nothing is happening. Where is the Holy Spirit? Because the, the sign of the Holy Spirit being present. Number one, there is power. There is holiness. There is prayer. There is intercession. There is fast and prayer. There is evangelism. There is winning souls for God. There is adding to the church daily. There is discipleship. There is signs and wonders. Oh, my God. Where do we turn from for help when we are in danger? Instead of putting confidence in the flesh or seeking to the help of sinful man, we need to put our all the dependence in the Lord who alone is the righteous judge and victorious warrior. He will conquer all enemies and deliver us in the day of trouble, the Bible says. One day in the future, the nation of Israel will repent, the Bible says, and turn back to the Lord and experience complete deliverance. That's what we are now. We need to repent and turn back to God and say, Holy Spirit, have your way. We time the Holy Spirit now. Holy Spirit, our service is going to be only an hour. Our service, we got to get out by 12. We got to get out by 1230. We got to get out by one o'clock. We put a time to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not interested in you controlling the time. Why? Because he knows the hearts of the people that will be at the congregation. He knows the great need that happens. He knows the need of the body. He knows the need of the church. He wants to come in to fix things. And I tell you, for those that hear this message, to him that much is given, much will be required. I tell you, if you don't take heed, this is not the word of Brother John. This is the word of the Lord. If you don't take heed to what I'm saying right now, I tell you, the move of God that is here right now in the Maritimes, I tell you, in Atlantic Canada, is dealing right now with all these issues. It's going right to the root. And we're going to see some great things and we're going to see some bad things. Sorry to tell you that. Because in order, to, in order for us to get better, we have to get worse. Hello? Come on. A sleeping church must be awakened. Right? A dead church must be awakened. A church that proclaims to, 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 to have the Holy Spirit, but yet they have learned to live without the Holy Spirit. If we're going to evangelize this world, let us look how they did it even 20 years ago, even 30 years ago, even 40 years ago. We didn't, have to, we didn't have to dress like they did. Why? Because we were dependent on the Holy Spirit of the living God. We prayed. 
What did the people, when the, when the disciples went to prison, what did they do? Was it Peter? They went to pray. They had a prayer meeting, and the angel went and visited the, uh, the, 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 the disciples in prison. They, they got them out of prison, and then they came and knocked the door where the prayer meeting was. That needs to go back. Nobody went dressing like them to get them out of prison. We got, we got to stop this nonsense of coming up with carnal programs to reach the lost. You want evangelism? Evangelism is, is simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with everything that is in you. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's the message. Woe to those who, do, go, who go down to Egypt for help. And rely on horses. And trust in chariots. Because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. Oh my God. I'm so glad that I'm talking about this. I tell you. A lot of you talk about this in your lunch after church. And in your gossip when you talk uh, to, to the people around. Stop gossiping about it. Stop praying about it. That God will change the course in your church. That God will change the course in our cities. That God will change the course in, in our nation. In Atlantic Canada. And how he's going to do it. When we welcome the spirit of the living God. When we welcome, listen. The Holy, Holy Spirit. He's a Holy Spirit. So that means that when Holy Spirit is welcome, all flesh leaves. All flesh is dealt with because his ways are not our ways. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you to please consider what is being said here today. Oh, I'm sure that it's not going to be well received. You know, but deep down your heart, you know that what I'm saying is true. Because I'm not telling you to create a program. I'm telling you to return and please pastors, please leaders, please people. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your churches. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your ministry. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your homes and into your marriage, into your relationship, into your business. Because it is not by might. It is not by power, but it's by my spirits of the Lord. It is not by the arm of flesh, but it's by the arm of the Lord. We got to return to the arm of the Lord. And we cannot use our swords and we cannot use the arm of flesh. And that's what we're doing now. Our churches, instead of going forward, we have gone backwards. I look at I look at before when 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 people were winning people to the Lord. I mean, when the, you know, we didn't need to dress like the world. We didn't even need to talk like the world, because we allow the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit flow through us to reach them, and He knew their needs and their problems and what they were at. So, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that I, I am not afraid of men. I thank you, Father, that I fear you. And I thank you, Father, that what we need is people to rise up and speak the truth of the Word of God. Because, God, we have trusted in the arm of flesh. we coming up with programs and we dressing terribly. Really. And I'm not going the way people dress. No, 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 no. I'm not going there. It's just that the, 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 the programs that we're coming up with, the mentality that we have in reaching this nation for God, that we have to dress like them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it's not the arm of flesh that is going to bring them down, but it's the arm of the Lord, the power of Almighty God. So, Father, forgive us Lord, for working things in the flesh, carnal things. Flesh cannot win the loss for you. Only you by your spirit, you will do it. 
So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, let every church, let every individual, let every home, God, in the name of Jesus, welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life, in Brother John's life. You are welcome in Revival Hour. You are welcome into everything that you have trusted us with. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to guide us and to lead us and to help us lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. God loves you. I love you. I love you. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.